one of the follow-up questions because I, I was going through your site and i was going through parts of your book and one of the things you're very bullish on podcasting podcasting mm -hmm. is like something that you are like this is changing everything and so my question was why are you so bullish on podcasting versus any other social media platform or any other kind of platform out there mm -hmm. Well, I think one thing about podcasting, aside from the fact that it's growing in popularity and there's a lot of money being thrown at it, like Spotify in particular, uh, and the fact that it's very search friendly, um, you know, because Google is like transcribing podcasts now mm -hmm. so it's easy to search like if you search something in google you might end up with a podcast as a result so aside from that the fact that it's highly searchable and whatnot um just the connections if you have an interview style podcast where you're interviewing others or even yeah. if you're a guest on other podcasts like you don't even have to have your own i guess you could guess on other shows and just the connections that you make and the future collaborations yeah. and and then that person might know someone and they might know it just it's kind of snowballs and so and sometimes you can get clients that way through podcasting but definitely it helps grow your business because of the exposure and and what i was going to say was the thing that's different about podcasting than other you know like reading a book or watching a youtube video or whatever is that it doesn't involve your eyes so you can multitask you could be yeah. driving or doing the dishes and so someone is more likely to spend an hour well however long the podcast is yeah. and get to know like and trust you versus if they're having to watch a youtube video or read a book they might not ever finish it or before they have to go off and do something else <laughs> so i think the fact that people are more likely to finish podcast episodes and you know the whole no like trust factor and plus the connections and exposure yeah. and searchability i just feel like i think for businesses it's going to get to the point where it's almost going to be expected maybe for yeah. someone to have a podcast that like i think sense. I think even Wendy's has a podcast now. So, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, this is getting serious. <laughs> That's interesting. I, I mean, I definitely agree with you on, on every single thing that you just said, especially with the building relationships through like, you can be a random person and be like, hey, would you like to come on my podcast? And people will be like, yeah, sure, I'll get on your podcast and want to talk to you and you can learn so much from other people. And so my question, follow up to that is, you know, the app Clubhouse that's kind yes. of grown in popularity. How do you think that plays a role along with podcasting? Because it seems to be a live stream version of a podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I recently got on it. I haven't hosted a room yet. Um, I'm planning to. I just coming up with ideas but i go to rooms a lot and just listen and so yeah basically clubhouse for people who don't know it's a social media app basically but it's audio only and but it's not recorded like a podcast so yeah. you can't really go back and listen later so it's yeah. kind of like podcasting in a way but it's live and and plus it's there's several people communicating in a room um it's kind of like going to a conference i guess is like you there's different rooms that would be of interest and you pick which room to go in and um but yeah i i haven't used it yet for business because i i'm thinking about how best to approach that but i think that especially for podcasters and people who are used to doing audio and stuff yeah. that it makes sense and it's an easy way to if you're if you're in the room just as a observer or a listener i guess yeah it's other than getting educated it's not really gonna do much else but if you're in there and you're actually speaking or they call it getting on stage i guess yeah um then everyone else in the room is basically finding out about you and they can click on your profile and learn about you and yeah. um apparently people are much more likely to click on your profile in clubhouse than other social media platforms and you can't have clickable links in it but you could have your website or whatever listed uh, in there they would just have to like copy and paste it yeah. or whatever 
uh, you can link to Instagram and Twitter, and apparently people's Instagram and Twitter have been like doubling in followers. Yeah. Oh. So a lot of people have like landed big deals and stuff just wow. so I club. Yeah, so I'm just trying to figure out how best to <laughs> to leverage it for my business as well. Yeah. That makes sense. I've been thinking about, well, I don't use an iPhone, so basically I'm out on Clubhouse, uh, but I've just been looking at it and it seems very interesting and intriguing just the aspect of, especially for those who have a lot to say, it just seems like the perfect platform to to be on for people to kind of listen in their passive time, kind of like podcasts where you can just put it on in the background and you can learn so much stuff in the background. But at the same time, I don't know if, are you able to interact at all with uh, the people that are on stage, maybe ask questions or anything like that, or do they have to open it up at some point in time so then you can start asking questions on Clubhouse? Um, yeah, you have to like raise your hand and they have to call on you. Okay. Uh, but there's no like messaging or anything like that. Okay. Um, and I think the only way you can even speak or for people to hear you is if you're either a moderator of the room or if you're just in the room, you have to like raise your hand and they have to call on you. Just, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think they are working on an Android app, but who knows yeah. when, when that'll I mean, be. <laughs> I mean, it literally just came out last year and the thing just exploded with everyone mm -hmm. being stuck inside. And I think you made the perfect comparison. It's literally like a conference. Now that when you said that, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Because you go to conferences, you listen most of the time. You're not really participating until they do a Q&A session mm -hmm. and then you get to participate. So I was like, oh, that that's a perfect, perfect way of, of thinking about um about clubhouse but anyway let's get back on podcasting so what are some of the ways that you have found to monetize podcasts mm -hmm. so the way that most people think of they think of like ads and sponsorships but that avenue i wouldn't even recommend unless you're getting like uh, you know thousands tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of downloads because I think you only make like maybe 20 bucks per thousand mm -hmm. um, downloads f for something like that uh, for ads. Now, I guess you could have a sponsorship where a company approaches you or vice versa and you do like a host red ad or something like that. But yeah. again, you still need a lot of a lot. years <laughs> before you yeah. get to that point. Yeah. But so what I recommend for most podcasts is to monetize it through either having you know your own products and services that you reference yeah. on the podcast or through affiliate marketing where like what i do sometimes is say i have someone on my show and they have a book yeah in my show notes i'll use my amazon affiliate link to link to that to book and even if someone goes to my show notes, clicks on that link and doesn't buy the book, but they buy anything else within 24 hours, as long yeah. as they haven't cleared their cookies, I'll get commission on that. So um, that's one way to do it. Or if there's a certain like product or service that you use and recommend, um, you if they have an affiliate program, you can sign yeah. up for that. And then uh, like I've had, I had an episode, a whole episode on Kartra, for example. Most of my episodes are interviews, but yeah. every now and then, if there's a particular like software program that I use or recommend, I might do like a little episode on it. Or in the beginning, I would actually interview uh, like the CEOs or someone within that within company. The company. Yeah. Yeah. To talk yeah. about the. And then, yeah, in your show notes, then you could link to your affiliate link or. You could even create a pretty link in WordPress where you're like your website.com forward slash the name of the the product yeah. or whatever, and it goes directly there. To them. So that's definitely a good way to monetize. Uh, another would be creating merchandise, which is very low profit. On those. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cause I mean, unless you have a, a dedicated fan base who just, and a really creative, maybe t-shirt design. I mean, people probably aren't going to buy the merchandise you know so that's one thing you can try but it's, it's a lot last yeah. yeah 
I hope you enjoyed that little snippet of the Rambling Mind podcast. If you want more of the Rambling Mind podcast, or if you want to listen to the whole episode that you just heard, go check it out on any podcast listening platform, whether that be Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, Stitcher. I could go on and on, but you guys already know which podcast you love to use to listen to. So go check it out. Link down in the description as well. I'm going to catch you all later. Peace.